Let's talk about Audio Suite, when we use Audio Suite, when we don't use Audio Suite. So let's see, where do we start with this? First, let's talk about inserts versus Audio Suite. So we have inserts in Pro Tools. That's where we add our plugins. So if you heard the term plugins used before, um, we talk about adding plugins on our inserts panels. That's kind of the more frequent way that we discuss adding plugins. And then we can also use our plugins in Audio Suite. So there are also some softwares that are freestanding as well that have plugin versions. So you might have seen those. Um, in theory, if you add it as a plugin, um, it's not freestanding. <laughs> That's kind of the definition of plugin. But so here, for example, I'm on my edit window here, and here's my inserts in the edit window that are currently displaying. So I'm displaying inserts A through E. And so as I go from the top down here, these are each tracks insert uh, panels that we have. And you can see some inserts on the panels. So these are different plugins, different processing effects. And so when we add an insert in Pro Tools, we're often adding some kind of effect processing unit, right? So this is where we add things like reverbs, delays, um, auto-tune, auto you know, stuff like that. So we can add processing here. And if you don't see this insert A through E, you can click on this little rectangle here and you can display it. So right now I'm, I'm actually displaying inserts A through E and inserts F through J. So I can actually hide those if I want. I can display them if I want. And the same idea holds if I do command equals and I switch to my mix window, I can view inserts on the mix in window as well. And so these are the same exact insert panels. They're the same exact inserts. Uh, whatever I have here will also be in the edit window. As long as it's visually displaying, it is there and it is um, either active or bypassed or whatever the state is that it's currently in. So they're linked, right? So the inserts A through E on the mix window are linked to inserts A through E on the edit window. They're the same thing. I hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to make sure that, that I'm wording it properly. So if we do not see our inserts on this mix window, you can click this drop down menu here. So it's a little rectangle down here, similar to in the edit window. And you can either hide or display them here. So here you see I'm showing both. I can hide inserts F through J. I can bring them back into play. So those are our inserts. There's also the audio suite menu up top here. And you can click this menu and you'll notice that a lot of the plugins that we have in our insert panels as options, we have here in the audio suite menu. And so there's not um, perfect overlap here. There are some plugins, for example, that only exist in audio suite. Um, I believe there might be some plugins that only exist as, mm, is that true? There might be some plugins that only exist as inserts. If you know whether there are, comment them in the comments below because I'm kind of curious. I'm not thinking of any right now, but that doesn't mean that they, they don't exist. But I do know there are some plugins that exist in Audio Suite that do not exist elsewhere. So a good example is like uh, Vocaline, right? A lot of the Vocaline stuff we use as Audio Suite plugins, we don't use as inserts. And things like um, Reverse, the Reverse function which is also in this menu. Um, this will only exist as an audio suite. It's not an, in, an insert plugin, right? There are some plugins that can reverse things to various degrees. You know, like for example, I'm thinking about like delays where they reverse the, the delay effect in some ways, right? So it's not like you can't reverse in a plugin in an insert, um, but this specific reverse plugin is only available here in audio suite. So we have these two options, right? We have our insert panels and then we have our audio suite uh, menu. And these are two different ways of opening up and using plugins. And so the big difference here, I've talked about this before on my channel, is that with Audio Suite, you're highlighting a clip or a collection of clips and you're processing onto the clip itself. So, you know, when I talk about clip, I'm talking about like individual chunks of audio here in my actual timeline. So you're processing to the actual clip itself. And so it is often generating a whole new audio file. And that is then a destructive action. So it will replace the old audio file with a new process one. And so if you want to undo it, um, it can be very hard to undo Audio Suite plugin processing without hitting Command Z to undo, right? So if you did it a while ago, and now you're trying to go back and undo it um, after some time has passed, and you've done a bunch of other things within your session, it can be a bit of a pain if you didn't prepare for that eventuality, which we'll talk about in a second here. So Audio Suite, it can be destructive. That's kind of one of the cons in my mind. But the other thing about it is it doesn't use very much processing power because it processes the audio, and then it creates the new audio file. And now it's... Um, it's not using that processing power as you play back to do the, the processing itself. It's just replaced your audio file with a new audio file. So 
Audio Suite can really help save processing power if your computer is having trouble keeping up with all the plugins that you have on the inserts panels. You can just hard print, so to speak, your processing onto an individual clip using Audio Suite, and that will save you processing power when you then hit play to listen back. So that's Audio Suite. And so with inserts, the thing about inserts, they take more processing power because they are actually running the analysis. They're actually running the effects processing in real time, right? As you hit play, the plugins are processing and changing the audio however they change it. And then they're spitting out the audio, right? So it does take more processing power when you're playing back your, your song or your whatever, right? Um, the other thing about these is you put them on a track and they will affect the default is for them to affect everything that's on that track. So unless you automate them, so for example, you could bypass them and automate the bypass on and off. Um, unless you automate them, they are going to be affecting the whole track equally, which can be nice if that's what you want to do, right? So that's an advantage. And the other advantage, right, is that it's not printing onto the audio itself. So the underlying audio file that's on your timeline stays the same as it was before. And you can easily just bypass and here without the processing and then bring it back in. You can easily change the processing as you go. So if you're not ready to commit to what you've done, you know, you can um, just throw an EQ on, for example, and let's say this one, right? I can just throw this EQ on. I can make my changes and I don't have to be super confident about how I want it because I can always tweak these settings later and it's going to instantly change how it affects the whole track for me unless I've automated it. Of, again, of course. So those are kind of the pros and cons for using Audio Suite versus using an insert panel for your plugins, right? I tend to, what I do and what I recommend is have your default being to use your plugins as inserts as much as possible because it's easier to undo, it's easier to change, it's easier to tweak as you go, right? And that's something that I do very often. I know a lot of other people do that very often. So I do recommend doing things that way and only using Audio Suite uh, when you feel like you need to, right? So only using Audio Suite when inserts aren't cutting it or when you feel that there's an, a, a definite benefit to using Audio Suite, right? And you got to keep in mind that it is going to be destructive. So let's go into what I recommend doing when we use Audio Suite. So what I recommend doing, so this is just one of my samples that I, I took off Splice for these YouTube videos, but what I recommend doing is uh, actually duplicating your track before you start doing the Audio Suite function. So what I'll do is let's say I want to run some kind of processing on these vocals using Audio Suite. I will click on this playlist selector and I will choose duplicate and it will create a duplicate of my audio, the whole audio track that's on that main playlist. And so if I wanna then look at that duplicate, I can go to playlists and I can see it down here. So these are the same exact thing. This is the duplicate that I just made, or actually this is the duplicate I just made, and this is the one that's been playlisted. So that's the one we had before. So you'll notice they're the same exact audio file. So if I then wanted to use Audio Suite on this, let's say I wanna go and I wanna do, let's use the reverse one, because we were talking about that. And let's say I want to run that. I can preview it. Let's not listen to the whole thing. And then I'll just hit render and it'll reverse it for me. Now, if I decide later, you know, like an hour from now when I've been working on the session for a while and I'm like, oh, I don't really like how I reversed it. Maybe I should have like split it in half first or whatever. Instead of adding more processing and potentially degrading the audio, I can now go look at my playlists if I want to. So if I'm not in playlist view, I can just click where it says waveform and switch back to playlists. And I can now really easily be like, oh, well, I want to redo this whole part. So let me just push this old one up. And now I can redo whatever processing I have there. So that's what I recommend doing if you're going to use Audio Suite to process something to save you from having to hit undo a million times and then redo a bunch of work. So I hope that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So let's say you're all good, right? That all makes sense. We know how to playlist. We're happy doing that, that whole workflow. Um, we're good. We're comfortable using Audio Suite. When do we tend to use Audio Suite? And so this is kind of my whole reason for making this video is thinking about when I tend to use it and when I tend to not use it. And so I have a few plugins. I have a few functions where I definitely use Audio Suite every time. It's kind of like my default is 
Use it in Audio Suite, right? And so the first one, like I mentioned, is using this reverse function, right? It's available in Audio Suite. I don't have a plugin that really easily does it. It's usually affecting a specific clip, right? So you have to select a certain clip and then run the processing on it. It just makes sense to use Audio Suite for reverse. So I will use Audio Suite for reverse. And again, that's available here in the other section. The other one that I'll use it for is to use Autotune. So I will often use Autotune as an Audio Suite plugin when I want to go from the auto mode into graph mode. So if I'm using auto mode, a lot of times I'll just leave it as an insert here on the actual track itself. Um, and I'll have my settings in the auto mode and I'll see how things go. And sometimes that's enough, especially if the vocalist doesn't need a ton of tuning. Sometimes that's pretty good. Um, sometimes what I'll end up doing is automating like the retune speed a little bit and like adjusting it a little bit as necessary. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that works as well or better than what we get in the graph mode. But a lot of the time you have to switch into graph mode and tune really specific notes in a really specific way. And so when we wanna do that, that is when I pull out the audio suite. And you can do this as a plugin on the track, but I was taught by people who uh, do this type of vocal production where they're editing and tuning and stuff um, as a job. You know, I have I was taught by people that do this specifically, that specialize in this to do it this way and use it as an audio suite. Um, and I think the reason for that is this takes a ton of processing power. This plugin takes a ton of processing power. I've also heard horror stories of people getting everything figured out in graph mode and then plugins for getting just kind of like wiping their data and they have to redo it. So this way it gets printed onto the actual audio file itself. So for example, in Autotune, I'll just kind of start to do it. I often just do pitch and then I play it in and I just did a short, short chunk there and I make the changes I want, right? And you want to set the key and stuff beforehand, that helps. Um, but you make the changes you want, you edit it however you want. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to use Autotune because that's uh, its own thing. And so then when you're done with it and you have it how you want it, you just hit render. And actually, let's look at the audio, um, the name here. So watch this name. I'm going to hit render. And it's added AT Pro to it. So that's how I know that I've tuned this in graph mode. And a lot of the time, you know, like I'm not a specialized tuner. So this does happen every so often where someone will want something a little bit different than how I did it. And so when I have playlisted the old version, I can then really easily, again, push it up and redo the tuning if I want on a certain chunk. So that's really helpful. That's really handy. One thing that I tend to do with vocals specifically is I will have a version of auto auto tune here on the inserts panel with like some subtle tuning and I'll go through and whatever phrases aren't quite cutting it with the subtle tuning. I will then go and audio suite them with the auto tune pro in graph mode and fix just, you know, a few phrases here and there as necessary. So that's one way that I tend to use audio suite. Another one that I tend to do is when I'm using uh, noise reduction plugins. And so this is because pretty much purely because of how much processing power they take. So like I have isotope and where is it? Isotope. I have Oop, that was the right one. So I have a bunch of the, the noise control stuff. So like if I add a noise reduction plugin on here, sometimes, let's look, I'm going to switch over here. See how it's orange here? So it's getting close to the delay compensation, not being able to handle it. So oftentimes when I have a bunch of plugins on the track already, and this kind of comes into play more when I'm doing uh, like sound design type of stuff, because oftentimes that's when I want to do noise reduction. It's not really when I'm recording vocals in the booth, right? Because that tends to sound pretty good and not really need the denoise as much. But you know, if someone sent me a file and maybe it wasn't recorded in the best acoustic space, or if I'm doing sound design stuff, a lot of the time what I'll want to do is I'll want to run it through some kind of noise reduction. And then I might want to add a bunch of plugins to help, you know, correct or or improve the sound or 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 just change the sound even and get it how I want it. So a lot of the time when I'm using a noise reduction plugin, I'm also using a bunch of other plugins and these tend to take a lot of processing power too. So what often happens is this goes red and then everything's not compensated properly. And so nowadays what I do is I will, instead of adding the plugin here, I will use it in Audio Suite. So I'll go find whatever the noise reduction is that I wanna use. Here it is, it's down here at the bottom. So I'll go find it and I will process, you know, whatever clip or clips I wanna process and I'll run the whole, you know, figure out how I want everything set. I'll preview it, I'll listen here and then I'll hit render when it's 
good to go. And again, the same thing holds with having a playlist version of the unedited, unchanged audio. Okay, and so the final thing on this list of things that I tend to use Audio Suite for is to use Vocaline. So I use Vocaline on almost every single project nowadays, um, to some extent, not, you know, on everything blanket statement type of thing. But I do use Vocaline on almost every single thing that I work on a little bit at the very least. And I do this because I believe there's not an insert option here for Vocaline. So let me just double check. It is Synchro Arts. Yeah, I just have Repitch and Revoice Pro Monitor. So uh, some of the Synchro Arts plugins are only available as Audio Suite, and I think that has to do with how they they process it, how they how they do things, and that's fine. It works great as an Audio Suite plugin. This is kind of um, similar in my mind to like pitch correction stuff. I mean, they have they actually have pitch correction here too. So they have the match pitch and match timing stuff. Um, so it's very similar in my mind to Auto Tune and. I, I'm sure it takes a good amount of processing power. So um, the reason why I use it as an audio suite is because it's the only option, but I also think it, it would probably make sense to use this as audio suite regardless, even if there was the option. And this one's fun. I've showed how to use this a little bit, I think, in a video before. Um, if you wanna see this in more detail, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do a video on it. I use it to match uh, like backing vocals to the lead vocal in terms of timing mostly, uh, sometimes with pitch too, but it's uh, it's good, it's fun, it's easy to use. And uh, the new version is pretty rad. I also use it for, uh, let's see, where is it? Revoice Pro Quick Doubler. I use the Quick Doubler a lot, not as much as I use the Vocal Line 6 Pro, but I do use the Quick Doubler a good amount. So same thing there. Both of these, you know, I'm making sure I have a playlisted version. I'm running the processing. I'm checking it out. I'm seeing how I like it. And then I'm moving on, right? So same thing holds. And I think that's it. I think that's the whole list. So let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. This is by no means a comprehensive list. This is just the first few things that, or maybe not the first few things, but the most obvious things in my mind for when I definitely will use Audio Suite. So if you have any that you would put on this list, let me know in the comments below because I'm always trying to think of ways to improve workflow. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with like your computer and stuff like that too, is, is when you make the decision to switch to Audio Suite. But yeah, I think that's it for now. If you want, please check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise, and we have additional content on there. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord server that's been a lot of fun. And my patrons get early release videos. So... Check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Okay. I'm having one of those days where, like, I, I had to bring up my book. It's like my emotional support book. I'm not going to read this up here. I'm going to work all day. That's what I do, right? But what I do is I, I'll bring my book up, and it helps me kind of, like, get started with the day, you know? Because I'm like, well, if I want, I could take a break and read my book. But then I never do. I never end up doing it. It's like a psychological hack that I do to myself just to get myself physically up here to start the day. Because like I'm having one of those days where it's like it's been getting cooler and I've been a little burnt out and I kind of just want to instead of working till like 10 p.m. every night, I just want to hide under my weighted blanket and read a book and chill. And I might have a little bit of that tonight. So we'll see. I hope so. Tomorrow's Halloween. So. I hope everyone had a good Halloween. Cool. I think my ancient GoPro is probably about to overheat and stop on me because it usually does after about this amount of time. So I'm going to go and I'll talk to you all later. And I hope you're all doing well.